Yes. 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 No. You may have remembered I streamed Bloodborne not too long ago, and in that stream we bo we fought both Mikalash, host of the Nightmare, and for the first time ever I fought Murgo's Wet Nurse. Now for the uninitiated, Murgo's Wet Nurse sounds just like another From Software Bloodborne boss, when in actuality it is one of the hardest pieces of shit bosses I have ever come across. So today I thought, why not make a video talking about the stages it takes, especially in a From Software game, the stages you as a player go through to kill and conquer those bosses moving on through the game. So without further ado, roll the intro. Now, as I mentioned before, I did a stream where I fought this boss for the first time recently, and let's just say, things did not exactly go my way. You gonna do it again? No, you're not. HA <laughs> HA! FUCK! 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 WHAT?! EXCUSE ME?! ARE THERE TWO OF YOU NOW?! <laughs> <laughs> so feeling a bit beaten down in my attempts to bring Murgo's wet nurse to her knees, I decided to immediately start writing this video. And for those of you who've played Bloodborne before and beaten Murgo's wet nurse with ease, I both envy and respect you, as I've clambered my way through Bloodborne's world and other bosses with a minimum of 20 to 45 attempts each. And you really want to, don't you? Because exploring Bloodborne's vast open hellscape is as enticing as it is horrifying. But like any other From Software game, its bosses are where it shines the brightest. Because in these battles, it's you against what could essentially be described as a towering giant, armed with nothing but a toothpick in your hands while they're wielding a weapon the size of three Empire State Buildings. But Murgo's Wet Nurse specifically opened up a very dark hole in my heart. One that I hadn't felt since the days of Ornstein and Smo in the original Dark Souls game. I still haven't beaten that, by the way! It left me feeling defenseless against its attacks and continued its onslaught of knife-swinging bullshit for far too long. It seemed hopeless, but it didn't start out that way. This leads me to our first entry, the Dry Run. This is more or less an attempt you don't care about losing in, but rather using to learn the boss's attack patterns, timing, and trying to figure out when the hell you should heal. You've spent all your blood echoes and have virtually nothing left to lose, including your dignity. Normally in this stage, you get your ass handed to you, and a lot of the time, you don't know why until the fight is already over. But in a game like Bloodborne, it's about perseverance and stepping up to the challenge of toppling these tower-like bosses to the ground until nothing is left standing but you and the arena. This is also normally the stage where anything and everything you do more or less will end up leading to your downfall. Swinging too early on an attack, rolling too late, or messing up the timing in general. They're all challenges you'll eventually overcome in the end of course, which moves us right along to my next point. The climb. Obviously by this point in time, you've more or less gotten the attacks down, you know what's coming up and how to dodge it, and you feel ready to end this thing once and for all. But it's in that fit of overconfidence where you misstep one too many times. You get closer than you've ever been before, only to attack by mistake and get massacred. Many different things can happen in this stage, but no matter what, you always believe you'll persevere at any cost and tend to see lots of improvement in your methods. But still, somehow this thing just refuses to die. It's a feeling I can only compare to studying all night for a big exam and getting to school the next day to take the test only to discover you've studied the wrong material. It's a punch to the gut, one that hits you hard enough to make you consider whether or not you're a high enough level or if you're even ready to take this thing on with your current equipment. And that's where the grind comes in. Now, I know a lot of people hate grinding, even people close to me do. But at the end of the day, that boring, seemingly never-ending slog through levels you've already beaten and enemies you've killed 10 plus times is definitely worth it. Before my stream, I realized that I didn't have enough blood vials to survive the Mikalash fight in case things got dicey. So prior to my stream starting, I spent 15 to 20 minutes going back to Central Yarnum and got what I needed. Obviously, this is a very laid-back story in the context of grinding. 
However, by the time I got to Murgo's Wet Nurse, I was level 60 and had enchanted my weapon by slotting in a bolted blood gemstone, which luckily happened to be the Wet Nurse's weakness. This ultimately didn't help me one-shot the boss by any means, but better prepared me for the challenge of taking the boss herself down. So next time a boss seems impossible and you're playing a game where your level decides your strength, health, skill, etc., try grinding for an hour or two, and I promise it will make some form of a positive difference. Now we enter stage 4, which I will be lovingly referring to as Denial. In this stage, you're prepared for anything, have the weapons and equipment you need, and are all around ready to mess this boss up when suddenly you make those simple mistakes again, but this time when the boss is closer to death than it's ever been before. You start making excuses, you get sloppy, and your adrenaline rises to such a degree that you go in for the kill a second too early, and it ends up destroying you. You feel that no matter what you do, it's impossible. The boss is unkillable, and that's that. You may even spend your time doing what I did and completely give up for a day or two. It's completely and utterly hopeless, and there's nothing you feel that you can do to destroy this thing where it stands. Sometimes when this happens to me, I play other games, I go and run errands, or I just sleep on it for a while. All of these are things that, at the end of the day, will help you put distance between you and the boss, and allow you to focus on other things. But that's when it happens. That's when one day you come home from having a great shift at work, or go about your daily routine in a better mood than usual. I can do this, you tell yourself. You load the game up while flashbacks of losing and losing to this thing play on repeat, trying to deter you from accomplishing your goal. The fires of hatred and desire to press on push you forward to your goal. You've never been this focused before. You're ready, and this is where the boss finally meets its end. You go in as you have many times before, but this time it's happening, no matter how many attempts it may take, how many healing items you need to use and or retrieve. You start the fight, weapon in hand and carefully avoiding the boss's relentless attacks. They start doing something unexpected, a move or technique you've never seen before now, and you start to become uneasy before quickly setting yourself back up again. And finally, after attacking and dodging for what seems like hours, you do it. You run up to the boss, controlling your adrenaline like never before, and deal the last blow to its towering figure as it turns to dust and fades away in front of your very eyes. You've done it. The trophy pings and you realize it's finally over. Jumping around the room like a crazed lunatic waving your arms in the air in celebration of your well-earned victory. You look forward and see another boss mold forming in the distance. And while hesitant at first, you now understand what you must do, and march towards that bleak horizon with more confidence than you've ever had before. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching today's video. I know it's been a long time, I've got a lot of humongous projects in the works, but I thought I'd get something out to you because I felt extremely inspired in writing this one, and I decided to finish it up a lot earlier than I had previously anticipated, so we're here. The biggest thing I can't wait to show you guys here at some point this summer is The Art of the Game, which is that documentary I'm making all about video games and the players who play them, and the journeys that they've been on, and the experiences that they've had. It's going to be a deep dive into gamers all across my state of Colorado, and I cannot wait to show you guys. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you did like it, why not punch that like button in the face? Comment down below what bosses you've had trouble on in the past, be it from a From Software game, God of War, etc. Any game that you've had trouble with a boss. Let's be nice to each other down in the comments, especially if they have been hard bosses or easy bosses. Be nice down there, everybody. Without further ado, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you really want to support the channel and go that extra mile, you can uh, you can uh, donate on the Patreon page. But yeah, come on down and hit subscribe if you want to donate to Patreon. Cool. If not, super awesome. These videos are free for you guys to watch here on YouTube anyway. But as always, I'm going to be quiet now and let you guys get on with your days. I've been Tech Gamer. You guys have been a wonderful audience. It's good to be back. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everybody!